In the static analysis video, we showed how the static analysis can check if buckling has occurred or not, but it can't tell you how close the frame is to buckling. In this video, we'll show you how a full buckling analysis can detect how close the frame is to buckling, show the buckling mode shapes, and calculate member effective lengths. You can see in the model from the static analysis video that the sway deflection is extreme, and we suspect that it is quite close to buckling. Let's test this by performing a full buckling analysis. We will leave the load cases list field blank so that all load cases are analyzed, and we will leave the other settings at their default values. At the end of the analysis, the lowest buckling load factor for all the load cases is displayed. It tells us how much we can factor up or down the loads to reach the level at which the frame would buckle. If it is less than 1, then buckling has occurred, and if greater than 1, then buckling has not occurred. In our case, the buckling load factor of 1.07 tells us that it hasn't quite buckled, but we can increase the loads by only 7% before buckling will occur. In most practical structures, you would want a buckling factor of safety of much more than 7%. Now let's increase the load to beyond the frame's buckling capacity, and then rerun the buckling analysis. This time, the buckling load factor of 0.94 indicates that we have exceeded the frame's buckling capacity by 6%. Space gas can also show the shape of the buckling mode. In this case, you can see that the buckling mode involves a lateral sway of the entire frame. You can also hold down the B key while rotating the mouse scroll wheel to change the scale of the buckling mode shape. A buckling analysis also calculates the compression effective lengths of the members in a model, and these can be automatically transferred to the design modules. You can view the effective lengths by generating a report that includes the buckling results. In the top section, you can see the buckling load factor, and the bottom section shows the effective lengths. If a buckling mode involves rotations but no translations, it is often difficult to see any movement when the buckling mode shape is displayed. In this case, you can get a clue from the Node at Maximum Translation and Node at Maximum Rotation items. They show the direction of the maximum translations and rotations and the nodes at which they occur. Finally, you should be aware that a buckling analysis is quite sensitive to how you have restrained your model. If we revert back to a much smaller load, and perform a buckling analysis, we get a buckling load factor of 3.96. Obviously, this is quite safe. Now let's make a minor change by removing the out-of-plane restraint from the top of one column. While this change doesn't affect the static analysis results because there are no out-of-plane loads, it does have a dramatic effect on the buckling results, as you can see by the buckling load factor of close to zero. If we look at the buckling mode shape, there appears to be no movement, but after rotating the model slightly, you can see that this time the model buckles in the out-of-plane direction. Judging by the very low buckling load factor, this out-of-plane buckling mode occurs at a much lower load than the in-plane sway buckling we got when the top of the column was restrained. So you see that buckling can occur in any direction, even if there are no loads in that direction. You can also see that the restraints you apply have a big effect on which buckling modes can occur. It is therefore very important that you apply restraints that accurately reflect how the structure is restrained in real life.